Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to take a look at Salesforce. Interesting company for sure. If you're not familiar, they're a CRM, Customer Relationship Management Company. And they've kind of been like the, the big hot thing, I'd say, for the last four or five years now. Every it seems like every Fortune 500 company has switched over to Salesforce to be their, their platform of choice. So first tab here, just have info I pulled out of the 10K if you're interested in what I thought was important. Feel free to download the model and look through this um, DCF. So right now I have this set up so we get a valuation similar to their current market cap. So right, market cap is 212. I've adjusted my assumptions until we get a $212 billion market cap roughly, right? I mean, this is 220, but close enough on the sensitivity aspect. Um, pretty crazy assumptions from my opinion, but we'll walk through it all and tweak things and I'll tell you what I think it's a little bit more realistic, but um, this one's an interesting one. So they provide some pretty good detail in the recent years um, around like DNA amortization of revenue con contracts that capitalize cost of revenue contracts and then how the stock comp and the um, broader amortization costs are pulled out so we've backed all these costs out of the um, operating expenses. So if you were to follow the formulas, you'll see R&D is like G11 minus G36. So it's going to be 35.98 minus R&D stock comp of 703 because we just want the kind of cash-based R&D costs. So we have that piece. And then um, they're really, they're split into two different revenue groups, subscription and support, and then professional service and other. Professional service and other basically is like tiny margins, right? Like, I mean, it wasn't even profitable actually in 2021. The cost of revenue alone was more than the revenue it brought in. Um, but if we look at the subscription and support, a little bit different here. Um, definitely the big driver. So we'll see the revenue is, you know, almost tripled since 2017. And you know, the costs have about tripled as well, um, but the margins are staying attractive and it's kind of a high high growth business segment. And so for the subscription and support, they actually break it out for us between sales, service, platform, other, marketing, and commerce. And then for platform and other, they actually break this piece out for us. Um, it's Tableau. So they acquired this in calendar year 2019, which is their fiscal year 2020. So the Tableau revenue growing strong, you know what I mean? That's pretty strong growth there. And then they give us like the licensing revenue. So this is really, um, what's it called? Under, I'm trying to see, MuleSoft. Um, MuleSoft is really the licensing piece of this. And they give you, most of the years, they give you like the percentage of the um, total subscription and support revenue that's licensing. So 6%, 6%, 7%. And then I think they gave us the dollar amount here. If you go back into some older 10 Ks and then the last piece is just the other platform and other. And if you're curious about these business units and like what they are, really, I do have info from the 10 K pulled out to sales and service, right? Um, these are both cloud-based offerings and then marketing marketing commerce experience and the platform and other um, is really three pieces integration analytics is the tableau integration is the mulesoft licensing and then platform is um, kind of the last piece of it so you know we have these we've calculated historical growth rates for these business units for the the years they give it to us and then we've created some assumptions which you'll see in blue um, and you'll see we have to be going from 20 billion in revenue to about 150 billion in revenue on this top line while holding all other assumptions constant, basically. Um, you know, you hold everything else constant. And then with those assumptions, you can get the valuation. But I mean, if we actually look at the breakout, the revenue growth here, like we're saying, right, Tableau is going to go from being 1.5 billion to 15 billion, which I mean, Tableau is probably similar to like a um, Palantir in a sense. So, you know, maybe that's not that that far off. Like Palantir is basically like a dashboard where you 
pull in a bunch of data, it does a bunch of analytics, and then gives you kind of like a visual workflow of, you know, your data. Um, Tableau is very similar, like you can put a lot of inputs into it, and it creates a, you know, you can create dashboards and different analytic measures, but I think Tableau is a little bit more of a hands-on experience um, than Palantir, but, so, I mean, this seems very aggressive to like, you know, continue at this rate of growth. Um, and I obviously have it slowly tapering off. Like you're not going to keep growing at 50% on a $7 billion base. Um, licensing revenue, just holding this constant, right? You're going from 1.1 to 10 billion. Um, platform and other, which has actually been experiencing pretty good growth. Um, actually have that continuing to grow, but going from about 4 billion to 44 billion. So I guess what I'm really trying to say here is like, you're having revenue grow what, eight times, seven and a half times in the next decade. Um, and I mean, you know, it's fair. They doubled the revenue from 2018 to 2021, but like that's a four year period. So like what, 40 billion by here, 80 billion by here, 160 billion by here, if they can keep doubling revenue. But as your revenue grows, it becomes so much harder to continue growing at that pace. Um, so, I mean, this seems like a stretch. Um, you know, if I were to actually kind of put some numbers in here, right, I would, I would assume that this, you know, maybe they, they double it for like another year and then it tapers off to like a 20, you know what I mean? Oops. Let's do 20, like 25% growth or something. Like it's still high growth, but not anything crazy. And then take a couple percent off a year. You know, like I, you know, I think that that's probably a little bit fair. Um, so you shave that down a little bit. Licensing revenue, really all over the place. But I mean, it grew a hundred million, grew two hundred million. I mean, I would say you probably take this and take a percentage off a year, as you kind of regress back towards sing high single teens, something like that. Um, and then platform and other, you know, instead of maybe having it grow, have it decrease a percent because as it gets bigger, it's harder to continue these levels of growth. And I think these are still very healthy um, revenue assumptions. And then, you know, some of these other businesses, um, like we've seen, right, marketing and commerce growth, this has decreased like 5% a year. Like, why is that going to continue growing? So maybe we have it just continue to decrease. Um, you use something like that, right? Now, don't get me wrong, it's still crazy growth for the company, right? If you look at the total growth, 25, 27, 29, 25, and then you're going 25, 20, down into the teens, 106 billion in revenue. Go back to our DCF, getting a valuation of 140 billion. Um, so, you know, pretty different from the, the 212 they're valued at. Um, I think my play on Salesforce, if I were to try to make a play here, would be wait for them to have a bad quarter, um, right? The way they're priced, they're priced to just have insane growth for the next decade. Wait for them to have a bad quarter or two, which, you know, that'll happen over, you know, a 10 year span. Like there's going to be down quarters and there's going to be up quarters. Um, wait for them to have a couple of bad quarters, you know, have their valuation drop, you know, take 20, 30, 40, 50% off. Um, Maybe not 50, but I mean, this is what, 212? So if 212s, what's the difference here? This is like, yeah, I mean, I guess that is like a, I guess it's a 33% dip if we're looking at it from the, the other way. Um, yeah, so wait for them to dip 20, 30%, something like that. And I think you can get a much more comfortable entry. Um, they're, de you know, I think they're priced for kind of a perfect decade, which no company is going to have, um, you know, we saw it with Netflix recently, right? They missed subscriber growth and stock price just plummets. Um, I think they're down like 10 or 15%. So, you know, I think it's, you know, they have one or two bad quarters, their stock kind of levels back off. Um, it will become a little bit more reasonable. But I mean, even to think for them to go from 20 billion in revenue to 100 billion in revenue in a decade is crazy. Um, that's, you know, that really is insane growth for a company that size. 
but I think it's, you know, we're, we're so used to just these crazy valuations currently where we're like, oh yeah, sustaining 25% growth as a company is completely normal. Um, but I mean, in reality, it's not, that's very tough to do on that big of a revenue base. But anyways, um, definitely an interesting one to pull together. Uh, feel free to download the model and obviously tweak some of these assumptions. Like I made some slight ones like professional service and others, percent of sales. Obviously they're not going to keep operating above hundred percent. Otherwise they would just stop doing that. Um, left some of the other ones all flat just for the sake of argument. But like, I mean, you could probably have, you know, you could probably assume some margin improvement here and then have it taper off after a while. Um, and you know, maybe that's more of how the valuation is. People are looking at it. R and D though, you're gonna have to keep having huge R and D if you're trying to, you know, quintuple your sales in the next decade. Um, G and A doesn't scale directly with revenue, but it usually stays pretty close as a constant percentage. Um, I mean, they've seen some improvement, right? So maybe they get better by a half percent a year or something and you layer that in. Um, so, you know, you can definitely tweak some of these other assumptions and still get a similar valuation. Um, the question then becomes like, is this still just way too aggressive of growth? Um, and, you know, I don't, I don't have the answer to that. I don't know. Um, it, it's hard to tell sometimes if these companies can keep growing at the clips that they do. And I mean, if we look at like, is this going to go back towards 15% stay towards 11? Hard to say. Um, R and D is this actually going to have to increase, you know, a half percent a year, which maybe it does. And, you know, maybe shaving a percentage off a year here is aggressive. I don't know. Um, but I mean, I think even after we kind of tweak some of these with cost savings here, right? Cost savings in GNA as they scale, and then a little bit of increase in R and D, you know, I think you're still getting, you get closer, but I'm uh, not quite there. And you're still expecting to quintuple sales in a decade. So I don't know, definitely a fun one to look at and fun to play around with the numbers and try to get to evaluation. But, um, Personally, I'd probably wait for them to have a couple of bad quarters like Netflix and then see the price come down and you could probably get a attractive entry price if they can stay on this course in general over the next decade. But I don't know. I guess we'll see. Um, thanks for tuning in. If you have any questions or comments, leave them below and I'll uh, get back to you. Thanks so much.